According to World Bank projections, Sub-Saharan Africa's economic growth is expected to be roughly 3.6% this year, essentially flat from 2022. Interest rate increases and reductions in subsidies, among other measures aimed at controlling inflation and managing the region's mounting debt, will impede the sub-region's growth. Growth is also anticipated to be restrained by a sharp slowdown with important trading partners, especially China. As per the most recent projections from the World Bank, Niger is among the few African nations that are expected to have the fastest growing economies. Niger, a country in the center of the Sahel, relies 40% of its GDP on agriculture and has a poorly diversified economy. Due to negative per capita growth and rising inflation, the percentage of the population living in extreme poverty is predicted to reach 44.1% by the end of 2023. This will result in an increase of 700,000 people living in extreme poverty, bringing the total to 12 million. Over 700,000 displaced individuals, including refugees, asylum seekers, and internally displaced people, were being housed in Niger as of September 2023. The United Nations Refugee Agency UNHCR, reported that over 6,900 asylum seekers arrived in Niger between August and early September 2023 the majority of whom were from Chad, Nigeria, and Burkina Faso. Not only is there hope for Niger, though, but the country's economy is expanding quickly, and the World Bank's growth projections are extremely positive. Hello, and welcome to Think Rich Media. In this video, we'll be talking about how Niger is on track to become Africa's fastest rising economy. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications in order to get notified on our future uploads. Looking at Niger, West African landlocked nation of Niger, also known as the Niger or officially the Republic of the Niger. It is a unitary state that shares borders with Algeria to the northwest, Benin, and Burkina Faso to the southwest, Nigeria to the south, Algeria to the east, and Libya to the northeast. As the largest landlocked nation in West Africa, it has a land area of nearly 1,270,000 km2. The Sahara occupies more than 80% of its land area. About 25 million people, the majority of whom are Muslims, reside primarily in the southwest and south of the nation. In the southwest corner of Niger is the country's capital, Niamey. Niger was on the periphery of several states after Islam spread throughout the region, including the Kanem Bornu Empire and the Mali Empire, before larger portions of its territory were incorporated into states like the Sultanate of Agadez and the Songhai Empire. As part of French West Africa, it was colonized by France during the Scramble for Africa and became an independent colony in 1922. Following the country's independence in 1960, terrorist attacks and political unrest, four periods of military rule and five coups d'etat have occurred in Niger. 2010 saw the adoption of Niger's seventh and most recent constitution, which established a multi-party, unitary semi-presidential government. After the most recent coup in 2023, a military chontet is once more in charge of the nation. Niger is among the world's poorest nations, per the UN's 2023 Multidimensional Poverty Index report. Periodic drought and desertification occur in some non-desert areas of the nation. The main sectors of the economy are subsistence farming, export agriculture, some of which is practiced in the less arid south, and raw material exports, which include uranium ore. Due to its landlocked location, desert landscape, low literacy rate, jihadist insurgencies, and the world's highest fertility rates as a result of non-use of birth control and the ensuing explosive population growth, it faces development challenges. Niger's economy explained. Niger's economy is based mostly on livestock, subsistence crops, and some of the biggest uranium deposits in the world. The EU's primary source of uranium in 2021 was Niger, with Kazakhstan and Russia following closely behind. The economy has been weakened by drought cycles, desertification, a 2.9% population growth rate, and a decline in global uranium demand. Along with seven other members of the West African Monetary Union, Niger uses the CFA franc as its currency and the Central Bank of West African States BIAC, as its central bank. The Organization for the Harmonization of Business Law in Africa OHADA, counts Niger among its members. Niger entered into an agreement with the Fund for Poverty Reduction and Growth Facility and became eligible for enhanced debt relief 
under the International Monetary Funds Program for Heavily Indebted Poor Countries HIPC, in December 2000. The Enhanced HIPC Initiative's debt relief greatly lowers Niger's yearly debt service obligations, freeing up money for investments in primary education, HIV-AIDS prevention, basic health care, rural infrastructure, and other poverty reduction initiatives. Niger's 100% multilateral debt relief from the IMF was announced in December 2005. This amounted to the IMF for giving roughly 86 million US dollars in debt, excluding the remaining assistance under HIPC. The government receives funding from foreign donors for almost half of its budget. Exploitation of mineral resources such as coal, gold, oil, and others may be able to support future growth. The cost of uranium has somewhat increased in recent years. Up to 2.5 million Nigerians experienced food shortages in 2005 as a result of a locust infestation and drought. In 2023, Niger held the 131st position in the Global Innovation Index. Current Economic Status of Niger With large-scale oil production starting up at the end of the year and average agricultural performance, real GDP growth in 2023 was predicted to be 6.9%. The prospects for growth have been significantly impacted by the Q data and its aftermath. Growth could drop to 2.3% or 1.5% per capita if sanctions and the suspension of international development funding last until the end of 2023 and agricultural output is only marginally above average. Trade sanctions, without exceptions, and border closures imposed by the ICAWAs will drastically cut imports, foodstuffs, electricity, and exports, including uranium and crude oil exported through the new pipeline, which is currently predicted to be delayed until 2024, of both goods and services. Government consumption and investment will decline as a result of the financial sanctions imposed by the Central Bank of West African states, which include the freezing of government and state-owned enterprise accounts, denial of access to long-term liquidity windows and the regional debt market, and a major decrease in external budget support and project financing from development partners. The banking sector's decreased liquidity and political unpredictability will hinder the growth of private investment. The suspension of Nigerian electricity exports to Niger is expected to result in power shortages, which will hinder manufacturing growth. Additionally, the construction industry is expected to be negatively impacted by lower investment. Financial services, transportation, and trade are probably going to shrink. Agriculture could be a source of economic resilience, but there are signs that the harvest could be below average. Economic Projections and Outlook Growth could resume in 2024 and reach 12.8%, 8.7% per capita, if the following happen, early sanctions lifting, large-scale oil production and exports, international development financing resumes, and decent agricultural performance. Growth could also stay high, at 7.4% in 2025. As sanctions are lifted and food inflation moderates, inflation may drop to 4% in 2024 and 3% in 2025. The number of absolute poor could drop to 11.3 million people and the extreme poverty rate could gradually drop by 5.4 percentage to 38.7% in 2025 with strong GDP per capita growth and lower inflation. These projections are largely dependent on policies that transfer oil and gas rents to the general public and to underprivileged populations in particular. In the medium run, the current account deficit should drastically decrease after oil exports begin. A reduction in the debt-to-GDP ratio starting in 2024 would be possible through medium-term fiscal consolidation, which would be supported by higher oil revenues and initiatives to boost non-oil revenues. The future is very uncertain if a political solution is not reached. Apart from the usual threats Niger faces, such as climate shocks and declining global oil prices, there is also a serious risk of environmental degradation. Prospects for poverty and growth are impacted by a protracted political crisis, sanctions that extend past 2023, a protracted suspension of large-scale international infrastructure projects and their funding, and a worsening security environment. Potential roadblocks include things like climate change, insecurity, and a faltering global economy. We'll maintain inflation below the WAE and the U target of 3%. With a significant increase in public revenue from oil production, public finances are predicted to stabilize. 
Additionally, the new public finance reform strategy is expected to improve the quality of public spending. Although the majority of the external borrowing was contracted on concessional terms, the public debt is expected to remain manageable. It is anticipated that the trade and current account deficits will close. The economic recovery and the resilience building strategies outlined in the new Economic and Social Development Plan 2022-2026 should also lead to improvements in social conditions. Niger's Foreign Trade Profile Foreign trade, which accounted for 38% of Niger's GDP in 2021, is welcome World Bank. The nation is integrated into the EU's Generalized System of Preferences GSP, and seeks to carry out the WAE AMU's trade policy. The cost of customs is not very high. Limited credit facilities, production costs, and informal sector import-export activities have hindered the growth of global trade. Petroleum products account for 38.6% of the nation's total exports, followed by uranium, 28.6%, vegetables, 5.7%, live animals, palm oil, machinery, and vehicles, 12%. According to the International Trade Center, 2021, the top products imported are rice, 16.9% of total imports, automobiles, 8.2%, machinery, 8.1%, air vehicle parts, 7.9%, mineral fuels, 5.2%, medicines, 4.7%, electrical machinery, 4.3%, iron, food and ammunition, and weapons. With 23.2% of total exports, France is Niger's top customer. Mali, 21.8%, Burkina Faso, 14.4%, Nigeria, 10%, the United Arab Emirates, 9.1%, Canada, 6.7%, and Ghana, 5.2%, are another top destination. Based on the International Trade Center, 2021, China accounts for 18.7% of total imports, followed by France, 14.1%, India, 8.5%, Nigeria, 7.5%, the United States, 6.4%, Thailand, 6%, and Japan, 4.2%, as its primary suppliers. Niger has a negative trade balance. The World Bank estimates that in 2020, the trade balance deficit will reach $2.2 billion. In 2021, Niger's goods imports totaled $2.741 billion, while its exports came to $1.211 billion. Services were imported for $1.023 billion and exported for $149 million, according to the WTO. Because of the rise in oil exports, the rebound in the sales of gold and uranium, and the decline in the price of food globally, it is anticipated that the trade deficit will decrease. Though Niger is the world's seventh largest supplier of uranium, it is also the seventh poorest country in the world. Through insurgencies and coup d'etat, the nation is struggling to survive. However, Niger's economy is expected to grow at one of the fastest rates in Africa, according to statistics from the African Development Bank and projections from the World Bank. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to turn on post notifications and post your comments in the comment section and the best comment will be pinned.